Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I wanted to get on here today and just talk to you about more seeds that we can grow this time of year in November. Um, this perpetual spinach is one of them. It grows like a kale, and it loves the cold weather. So I'm going to plant some of that today. We'll go out there and get a couple of our five-gallon buckets, and we'll start filling them up and see if I can plant some perpetual spinach. My kale that I've got growing out there is doing extremely well since the weather has cooled off. So I wanted to go ahead and get this spinach in the ground because I planted spinach earlier this year in the spring, but it could not take the heat. I mean, it was one of the first things that died was the spinach. My spinach and I think my lettuce. Whereas my lettuce always did real well in the past summers, but this summer with the 105 and 110 degree temperatures that we had, my spinach just bolted. So, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I might try to plant some more spinach. I mean, not spinach, but lettuce. I'm not sure because it needs a little warm soil for the seeds to come up. So I don't know. I think about it. I might plant a few seed of the lettuce and see what happens. But I am definitely going to go out there today and I'm going to plant my perpetual spinach because I know that it loves the cooler weather. And you're only, you're not even supposed to plant it until October, November, December. So, and I know it's going to be 85 degrees here today. This is what, November 7th? Um, and we were supposed to get our fro first frost on no by November 7th, but they've moved it up several weeks. We're not going to get our first freeze for another couple of weeks now. And I don't even know that it's going to get down to freezing. I think they said it was going to get down to about 35, 34. So that's not even freezing yet. So I'm going to go ahead and get my perpetual spinach planted today. I'll take you along with me for that. And uh, we'll see what happens with it. I mean, my radishes, my kale, you know, a lot of my tomato plants are still producing, even though it's cooled off. So, we'll just have to see what happens. And I wanted to talk to you about this composting in place that we do. Um, the only time I really have a problem with composting in place is if, if I cook, put fresh food scraps from the table in my bucket or my tote and I plant in it right away. Because a lot of times, if you put anything in there that attracts ants, your ants are going to get into that tote, and they're going to, a lot of times, will eat the roots of your plants growing because you you have uh, those little tender roots that have started, and those ants will eat, eat the roots right along with the table scraps. So, you can go ahead and build your tote and plant in it right away, but what I would do is mostly put in your green um, scraps, like your leaves from your other plants or vines that have died, break, break them off and put those in there. Uh, put anything in your tote that's not going to attract ants. And that's what I'm going to do with this perpetual spinach. Since I'm going to start these from seeds, and I definitely do not want ants to get into the roots once they start, I'm going to scrounge around the yard and I'll break off leaves from plants um, like some of the broccoli leaves that don't look too good or any of the green leaves on any of my plants that I can put into my bucket to use as compost or instead of table scraps that's not going to attract the ants is what I'm going to put in my two buckets that I'm going to plant my perpetual spinach in. I mean, the, the food scraps, don't get me wrong, they're, they're the best thing in the world. I mean, my five-gallon bucket planter that I started, you know, I told you to go ahead and put your bark in, your leaves in, 
uh, some of your native soil. Fill it full of food scraps. Anything, it doesn't matter. Just fill it full of food scraps. And put native dirt or more leaves on top of that. And when you get it about as full as you're going to get it, I mean, I'd wait, you know, I'd get it on up to about a couple of inches from the top. I'd put native soil on the top, and then I'd just leave it sit all winter. And all that food scraps and stuff, the ants will get in it. It'll help break it down. And those buckets will be right ready to plant in in the spring. And you're not going to have to worry about the ants getting in it then. Because they, they've gotten in it all winter long. They've done their thing. They've helped break it down. And in the spring, you can plant in it. But right now, I'm talking about if you're going to plant right away in that bucket, go ahead and fill it full of your leaves out of your garden or your vines that have half died or whatever. Just break them off and cram them down in that bucket. Anything that you can use that was growing out in your yard, put it in that bucket. And that's going to be your scraps. And then put your native soil on top, put leaves on top. When you get ready to plant, go ahead and put your um, couple of inches of um, potting mix, if you have it, or garden soil, whatever you want to use to plant your seeds directly in. And it always helps to have at least a couple of inches of that potting soil. If you don't have potting soil and you've got some good dirt around your yard, like the compost that, you know, under the trees where the leaves are broken down, and you can move those leaves away and you can get some of that dirt underneath, go ahead and get that dirt underneath there because it's all been broken down in the years and past and it's made good soil. So go ahead and get you some of that and put it in the top of your bucket and go ahead and plant your seeds in that. That way you don't even have to buy a potting mix or a garden soil to add to your bucket. Uh, because then when you water it, you're going to water it with your compost tea, and that's going to be your fertilizer. You know, that'll help all of it break down. But doing it that way, you don't have to worry about the ants getting in it to get to your roots of your plants that you're trying to grow. So, I just wanted to get on here and talk about that because... You know, I've had so many times that I've even forgot about that, and I've put table scraps in my buckets or my totes, and I went ahead and planted in it, and then I wondered why my plant died. And then I saw a trail of ants going into my tote or my bucket, and I realized, well, that's what happened. The ants got in there to the table scraps that I put in that bucket. And it not only helped break down the table scraps and all the other matter in there, but it also got to the roots of that plant. And they will eat those tender roots, just like they do the table scraps. So, I just wanted to warn people about that. You know, composting in place is fantastic because me, with one with my back and neck the way it is, I can't do gardening normally like a lot of people do they just get tillers they cut up the ground they plant in it everything grows fantastic i can't do that because for one i don't want to go to the expense of getting a tiller and i couldn't use it in my yard anyway because the yard is too full of rocks i mean my whole yard is rocks and you could dig to china and you'd still be hitting rocks the way it is here i think they found out that next door when they were digging to put down their septic they had to bring in one of those um, rock crusher things or um, jackhammer on a, a something like a backhoe to break up the rock just to dig a hole big enough to put a septic tank in. Because, I mean, it's nothing but rocks on this hill, this mountain. Yeah, I live on top of a mountain. I'm about the highest point in this area. But it's all rock. There's very little dirt in the yard. And the only time you can even dig in the yard is if it comes a heavy rain and it softens up all the dirt between the rocks. Then you might be able to dig a hole. But I guarantee you in digging that hole, you're going to dig up some boulders or some rocks while you're doing it. <laughs> because I've tried. There was one small spot in my backyard that I could plant a, a garden and it did real well. 
but you had to water it every single day, sometimes twice a day, and then it almost didn't do any good because it soaked through the ground and disappeared. So it's not like putting it in a tote where when you water it, the water is contained. It, you don't have to worry about it going 30 feet away from your plant root. It's going to stay right there. So as long as you fill your totes and your buckets with good soil and your, your good compost, uh, and you know you do your composting in place, you can grow just about anything in the world you want right in a 5-gallon bucket or an 18-gallon tote. And I've got plants growing out there in little 2-gallon flower pots that the seeds fell in, and they're, you know, it might be a pepper plant or a squash plant or a melon plant that fell in there and it started growing. And it's done real well. It's produced just like the cucumbers. Some things I didn't plant came up even in the small buckets, and they did real well. I mean, I've got a couple of peppers out there right now. The plants are growing in about a two-gallon flower pot. One of those little black flower pots that you buy your plants at the store in. And it's producing peppers. I mean, you can grow in anything. As long as you keep your, rich, your soil rich, you keep your compost tea going, you keep it watered, you can grow anything you want. I mean, I learned that the hard way. Like I said, years ago, I planted in the ground because it would rain a lot during February and the first week in March, and the ground was really soft, and even though I had to kind of go between boulders or rocks to plant my garden, I did, and it did real well. I was growing huge zucchini squash. I had squash, oh, I can't, I, I can't even tell you how many squash and zucchini plants I got out of my garden. But if it gets real hot in the summer, everything's going to bolt because you can't keep it watered enough. And I know if it gets real hot like it did this last summer, you know, with this 105 and 110 degree weather we had, the squash plants are not going to produce anyway. Nothing will because it's too hot on them. But at least you might be able to keep them alive so when the weather does cool off a little bit, they will produce for you. My son came over here one day with my granddaughter when she was probably four or five. And I had went out in the garden to pick some zucchini and squash because I was going to give him some because I knew I had so many. I didn't know what I was going to do with them all. And my granddaughter came out there with me and I started handing her big, long zucchini. <laughs> And she could only hold maybe two or three in her arms that were so big. And she'd run back up to the patio where my son was. And she'd put them out on the table there. And he said, where are you getting all that? She said, in Grandma's garden. And he didn't believe it. He thought I had a basket of something back there. And uh, he come back there and saw it. said, no, Grandma's getting it out of her garden. I'm helping her pick her garden. And that just tickled him to death. I, I always kept him in a lot of zucchini and squash when I grew in the ground because I had a lot of it. But the weather's been getting so funky the last couple of years. I mean, it doesn't rain that much the end of February or 1st of March. So the ground is not soft enough that I can plant anything in it. I could only dig one or two holes back there in that spot this past summer. And it was hard doing that, that I grew just an okra and a tomato plant out of. I mean, it was terrible. But I said, every year I wait till like the end of February or the first, first week in March. And if I get a heavy rain this year, this coming spring, I will be planting more in the ground. I'm going to keep my totes going, every one of them. And I'll probably add more buckets because I'm already building my buckets, getting them ready for spring. But I will plant a little bit more in the ground too. So we'll just have to see what happens. <laughs> but, yeah, keep your buckets going even in the winter time. Put your table scraps in them. I mean, I wouldn't throw uh, cooked meat and stuff in there. But fish, yes. If I catch a fish and, you know, I have stuff that I'm going to throw away, then I'm going to throw it in my bucket. If it's a, a raw fish, I'm not going to throw cooked fish in there. 
but I will put a raw fish in my bucket. Because it'll break down. It might. It's not even going to smell. It'll surprise you. In the summertime, in that heat, it only takes about three days for stuff to break down in your bucket in, with water in it. So you can throw table scraps in there today, wait three days, go out there to water with it, and it's all broke down already, and it doesn't smell terrible. I mean, sometimes it will get a bad odor, but, you know, that's to be expected. You're throwing table scraps in there, and it's all going to kind of sour and rot and break down. But after a while, when it completely breaks down, there, there's basically not that much of a smell to your compost tea. So, I love gardening. I really do. I love to watch things grow. I love to put seeds in the ground and just see what they do. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's enjoyable to me. It's relaxing to me to go out in the yard and plant something and watch it grow. And I hope the people that watch my videos feel the same way. You know, and they get a garden going and maybe I'll, I will inspire someone to get out there and spend some of their time in their yard growing something this summer. Yeah, as I find different things that I might want to plant, if it's the time of year that I can plant it, I'm going to get on here and, and I'll make a video of me planting it. And I'm going to have a video at the end of this one that I've started talking to you of me planting my perpetual spinach because I'm going to get that planted today. We've got 80 and 85 degree weather coming up for quite a while now during the day. And about two weeks it'll drop and it's going to get down a little cooler, but it's not going to be freezing. So, and even so, the perpetual spinach will probably like that. <laughs> So, we'll see. I'll get out there in a little bit, and I'll, I'll start building my totes, and I'll bring you along, and we'll plant some perpetual spinach. Well, I think I've decided I'm going to go ahead and try planting in my uh, five-gallon buckets that I've set up. I think the ants have pretty well left it alone. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and put some of this uh, potting soil in the top because I've already got it built up quite a bit. That is, if I get the bag open enough. Just put a couple of inches of that in there. Got some more of this soil that I'm going to put in there.
but I put broken down vines in there and then I'm putting that topsoil on top because I had put uh, table scraps and stuff in there but I think the ants have already done their thing with the the uh, table scraps so I'm gonna go over here and get some more uh, fresh dirt from the uh, trees if I can <laughs> Get me a bucket. Don't need to get much, just a little bit. <laughs> just enough to put a little bit in the top of that. Uh, so if I can put my camera down without it falling over I'm gonna show you here that I just get a lot of that uh, native soil right from under these trees I've got so many rocks even out here that it's hard to do that but And there's so many roots. <laughs> but you can see that's some pretty good dirt right there. So I'm going to get some of this and I'm going to put it in the top of that. Those buckets. And I think I'm actually going to put my seeds right in it. moving some of the leaves back because I don't want big pieces of stuff in here if I can help help it since I am going to be putting seeds in I want the smaller dirt if possible Let's see if I can get over here know if you can see that but I'm just moving some of this uh, broken down stuff back and I'm gonna scrape all that stuff up that broke down already and the dirt that's with it trying to get the rocks out. <laughs> don't need rocks in there. But there's a lot of good dirt right there that's already broken down. Yeah, anywhere that you've got um, anywhere that you've got trees like on an empty lot like I have where the trees have been dropping leaves for years and They've just sat there and rotted and decayed and over the years you've had even more. Then that is good dirt to put in your pots. 
That's nature's potting mix. Sometimes I think I need a bigger shovel <laughs> or a bigger hand tool than this one, but but I mean I've got mushrooms growing out here. <laughs> And that's great to put in there. Just throw those old mushrooms right in there and they'll break down. But I wanted to show you. I can't tell what I'm showing you here. But these leaves, they just fell here for years. And if you move all those top leaves away, you got broken down soil all under there. See that? Sorry about that, my camera fell. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. It fell because it was getting top heavy. But, Yeah, but all that is so good just to put in your in your totes and you can plant seeds right in it. You can put cuttings right in it. I mean, see? That's good dirt right there. You just have to take a few minutes to dig it out. <laughs> And in my case, you have to get rid of the rocks that come up with it. I think I got enough. <laughs> Let's go over there and see if we can put it in our buckets and plant our spinach. Oh, it's noon. I hear the lunchtime siren going off. <laughs> That's also what you would hear in case of tornadoes. Um, you'd also hear those if we had a... Uh, nuclear fallout <laughs> I cannot tell what I'm showing you here <laughs> I hope I got it in there <laughs> but anyway <laughs>
And we're going to go get a little bit of water to go ahead and water it before we put our seeds in. And I'm just going to use regular water this time. Uh, just for the first watering to get it watered down good. And then after this, I'll start watering with my compost too. I'm not sure where to put the camera. <laughs> because I can't tell what you can see. The sun is shining so bright. <laughs> well, like I said, normally I don't do this. But the table scraps that I put in there, plus all the vines and leaves and other stuff that I've put in there. I think the ants have already had their field day with it. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and plant my my spinach in it. <laughs> Normally I wouldn't water it this way. But since I'm putting seeds in, I wanted to make sure the, that it was already good and wet. And then I can start putting my compost tea in later. But this is my seeds. <laughs> you can see down in there. <coughs> I can't tell anything that you're seeing. But you just put them about half an inch to an inch down. And I'm only going to put two or three seeds in each one. And maybe one extra. Because if they get too thick, I can pull them out. But I think this is a good sunny spot to grow these. can't tell what you're seeing but I'm just making about a half inch hole 
maybe not quite half an inch with my garden tool and I'm dropping about two seeds in each hole. And then since it's going to rain later this week, I don't think I'm even going to have to come out here and water anymore. Not right away anyway. But I like greens. I like kale and I like spinach. So... There's just no good spot to put that camera. And like I said, if I get too many coming up in one pot or one bucket, I will just pull them out, thin them out. and start them in another pot. One in the middle right there just for good measure. <laughs> so there, all I did was put a little hole. About like that, I guess you can see it. But anyway, what I did was I just made uh, like a half inch deep hole with my little tool here and planted my seed right in it. So if all of that comes up, I'll have enough uh, perpetual spinach for this winter. And what I decided to do, since I already have these here, I've got onions growing in it, and they're going to come back up next year as well. I'm going to go ahead and um, plant some lettuce seed. I think I'm going to just go ahead and try to plant some lettuce seed down here. I can do more with this tripod than I can the other one that I had out here a minute ago. The other one is great for because it's taller. But the only problem is it'll get top heavy with me and it falls over. But what I'm going to do, I'm not making it deep at all. I'm just kind of loosening up the dirt and putting me a couple of... Uh, just mix it up a little. But I got other stuff growing out there. I got milk. What is it? Some kind of milkweed. Or I think it's like a purslane, but I don't like that kind. But what I'm doing is just, I'm just kind of roughing it up a little bit. And I'm just going to put me some, uh, some of this lettuce seed down in there. And we'll see. If it comes up, it does. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But we're supposed to get uh, a little bit of rain. And this is, um, well, this is red 
Russian kale. It looks like lettuce. Then I'm going to try growing it. Because you can plant it in August and runs right on through April. So it should be good to be planting for the winter time for fall garden. And I know I had another envelope of seeds and I don't know what I did with them. <laughs> Since we got this already going, I'm just going to move some of these wood chips back. I don't know if you can see that. Let me look in there and see. I don't know. Well, yeah, you can see it. It was a good place for all of my uh, squash and zucchini to grow, except it just got too hot on it. So, and I'm just loosening it up a little bit. I'm not really going to dig a hole, but I just want some of that dirt to be exposed, not just the wood chips. And I'm just going to sprinkle the seed in. Because I don't need it to... This seed, you just need it basically to the top of the ground. Sometimes I think I'm losing it. I know I brought another package of seed out here, or I thought I did. Let me go see if I can find it, see what I did with it. Because <laughs> I was going to plant the regular lettuce out there too. Maybe I laid it down and I thought I had it in my hand. <laughs> Stranger things have happened with me. Yeah, that's what I did. I laid it down right there. And that's the stir fry mix, but yeah, this one prefers cool weather too. And the Swiss chard, it likes the colder weather. That likes the coldest weather. That's the uh, Dragon Stir Fry Blend. And my lettuce. And I think I had... Something else that likes the cold weather. Oh well, we'll get some of this planted. And we'll see. But I knew I had that lettuce in my hand. <laughs> I laid it down. 
But some of these things prefer the cooler temperatures, you know, like collards, kale, Swiss chard, a lot of that stuff prefer cool temperatures preferably to the hot climate. So now that cat has got up in my bed where I just planted my seed. Now I don't want him digging around. Definitely don't want him digging around. <laughs> You see dried vines like that? That's great to put in your buckets and your totes for compost. But since I've already got this dirt in here and my squash are basically dying out, I'll try some of my lettuce. And this is supposed to grow through, grow real good through September through May. So it's supposed to be good for all winter long. So we'll see. And like I said, if I hit, get more plants than I need in one little spot, I'll just uh, dig them out. and put them somewhere else. And they changed the forecast. I checked it a while ago, and we're supposed to get some heavy rain about three or four o'clock today, which is only a couple of hours away. So. Sorry about that. Tried to turn the camera too much that way and nothing was gonna cooperate with me. See all these dead vines that I threw back in here? That's great to put in your buckets and your totes. Took some of that out because I'm gonna put it in some of my other buckets that I've started. See, I want to get down to some of the dirt. And I've already got a couple of pepper plants in here, but that's all right. I think I'm going to put some Swiss chard down in here. That's what I've got out started in the, uh, in fact, I got a couple of plants out there in the wishing well of Swiss chard that I've been harvesting. I just go out there and harvest me and see the seeds are quite a, pretty big. But you don't need but just one or two in there. I'm just going to slightly cover them up, not much. But with the rain we're supposed to get...
Oh, let's see, where can I put something else? I might just try some of this over here. But see, those are the couple of spots that I was able to dig a hole where I plant my garden. And what I did was I half buried a potting soil bag and I cut holes in the bottom and I planted my seed in the bag, in the dirt that I put in the bag. That way when I water it, a lot of the moisture stays in the bag. And I did the same with the uh, okra plant. And I was just testing it out. And I did it with this pepper plant and uh, marigolds. And it seemed to work pretty good. Because when I water the bag, all the water stays to the root. It doesn't go out all over the yard. And the same way there, I buried the pot. And I cut big holes in the bottom of the pot so the roots could go down into their native soil as well as the pot but when i watered it i watered it in the pot so i know it all went to the roots and i've got tomatoes on there this this is my roma tomato bush and that poor one is split open so Yeah, I'm, yeah, I've got a squash coming right there. So see, I mean, <laughs> these cooler temperatures just help stuff produce with that little zucchini, or it's a hybrid squash, a hybrid zucchini. It's one like I picked the very first of the summer on another plant on the other side of the okra. And I couldn't remember the name of it, but it is a zucchini. It's a form of a hybrid zucchini. So that'll be the second one that I've gotten for all summer. Because it's just now cooled off enough where it can start producing again. Oh, I forgot what I was going to do. I was going to come over here and uh, see if I can plant a few of these seed right in here with the uh, little squash. But all that I'm going to put in my buckets that I've started. All of this dead vine that's, I just threw it in the pot. And see, I had all this mulch. So I'm just going to move some of that back and throw my seed right down in the bottom. So, I let the rain come this afternoon and water it all. <laughs> and if all that comes up in these buckets, I'll have plenty of uh, perpetual spinach for this winter. And when the okra is gone, I may put something over there. Well, by the time the okra is gone, then maybe this perpetual, the perpetual spinach will be up enough to where I can pull out some small plants and transplant them over to the other pots where the okra and stuff sat. We'll see. Because I know the okra's not going to live through the freezing cold temperatures and the squash plants are not either. They're going to die out. So, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and it's about time to start 
cleaning up these pots. Of course, the peppers are still peppers are still producing in in these buckets. So, see right up there, they're still producing down here. Yeah, I'll eventually just pull out these vines that are dying off and stick them in another bucket and that'll be starting of some more compost for another bucket. And I'll need to put more native soil in these buckets too for next year. Throw a little bit more table scraps in the top and go ahead and uh, put a little bit more dirt down in there to replant in the springtime. Yeah, I'm going to be starting some more uh, plants pretty soon. But I wanted to get on here and show you that this is the time of year you can plant your lettuces, uh, your kale, your Swiss chard, because they're cold-loving plants. So, with that, I think the video is long enough. I'm going to go ahead and bid you a farewell. Y'all, please like share and subscribe to my videos support my channel and with that i hope all of you have a blessed day